Today I'm going to be redesigning modern logos so they look vintage. Up first we have Facebook. I wanted to go with a 60s inspired like old Hollywood looking sign logo for this one. So I started by making a bunch of diamonds and making those be teal and pink. I typed out Facebook in this font called Capital, rearranged it all so it fit within the diamonds, and lastly I wanted to add the to it to make it the Facebook, like the original name. And here's the final result. I think this one looks exactly like what I was going for with that old sign look, and I really like this one. Up next we have Apple, which I wanted to give a kind of early internet feel to this logo. So I drew out this abstract shape Apple with the pen tool and Illustrator, rearranged it a little bit and worked with the colors. I typed out Apple in this font called Blakely, and I kind of shrunk it and moved it out to fit in this space. And here's the final result. I could definitely see this one at the top of like an old 90s internet browser. Up next we have Google and I kind of wanted to go with the same effect as the first one. So I typed out Google in the font Jean Moderno and I added all these bubbles behind all the letters, made them the colors of the Google logo, and then finally added this border to the whole thing and here's the final result. This one's giving me Welcome to Vegas vibes and I love it. Lastly I did SpaceX. Again with the pen tool I made these kind of retro looking rocket shapes. I played around with adding a bunch of them, working on different strokes and textures, and then added a rectangle to the top. I put the word space in there, and for the X I knew I wanted to go with kind of a vintage starburst effect for that. So I added that into a circle, and here's the final result. This one's giving me like vintage NASA patch on a spacesuit vibe. Let me know which one's your favorite in the comments. Today I'm going to be redesigning modern logos so they look vintage. Up first we have the TikTok logo. I really wanted to make this one look kind of 70s inspired, so I went online and found a font called Bunky Dory and I typed out TikTok in Illustrator. I decided to give that a stroke that was the blue color from the TikTok logo, and then I gave it this kind of gradient looking drop shadow, and here's the final result. This one turned out exactly how I was hoping it to, and honestly I would really love this on a t-shirt. Up next we have Snapchat, and my idea for this one was a 1920s kind of art deco logo. A lot of these logos have very geometric shapes and a lot of gold and black, so I decided to try to kind of make the outline of the Snapchat ghost, but using geometric shapes. I drew that out on my iPad just to kind of get a gist of it, then I brought that into Illustrator and started actually making the shape. Once I was happy with how that looked, I typed out Snapchat in this font called Capital, and I noticed on a lot of these old logos they had the established date, so I ended up putting that at the top, and here's the final result. I think this ghost looks so cute, and it came out exactly how I was picturing it. Up next we have Tesla, and I thought it'd be funny if I did this in kind of like an 80s or 90s really colorful logo, so I found this font called Zubilo and typed out the T and the Tesla and then I added a bunch of just like old geometric looking shapes and here's the final result. It's giving me very much like MTV or like an old solo cup type of vibe and I love it. Lastly I chose to do Duncan and I wanted it to kind of look like a 50s diner feel. So I typed out Duncan and it's actually in this font called Dr. Sugiyama and I decided to make the I be an old like vintage starburst. Then I typed out donuts and I put them in a bunch of little circles. I added a very geometric like looking shape in the background and add a little line and here's the final result. If Duncan did like a vintage pop-up, I could definitely see them doing something like this. Let me know which one's your favorite in the comments. Today I'm going to be giving these modern logos vintage redesigns. So for this one I started with Target and they're really one of the only ones on this that actually have an older logo, but even that one just looks very similar to the current one. So I wanted to go in a completely different direction. So my idea for this one is that I wanted to make it look similar to an old dartboard using more muted colors. I didn't want it to look extremely uniform because I feel like a lot of 50s logos had a lot of organic shapes in them, so I wanted to make each slice of the dartboard like a slightly different shape. So in order to do this, I went ahead and drew two circles using the shape tool in Adobe Illustrator, and I put one inside the other. Then I took the pen tool and I drew out from the centermost point and made the basic overall shape of each slice. Then grabbing the circles and the triangle, I opened up the Pathfinder window and hit divide. This then made the slices be cut out and you can double click on the parts you want to delete and you're left with the outer ring and the inner rings as their own shapes but still part of that slice. So I continued doing this around the whole pie until I had each one cut out. Then using this old dartboard I found as a reference, I colored all the different slices and rings until I was happy with how it looked 
And my idea for the word target was to make the top of the T look like an old dart. So I found a reference on Google and then using the pen tool, I drew the top of the dart. And the cool thing about this is if you draw the dart and then you draw the bottom a perfectly flat line, you can copy the shape from the top and flip it horizontally and then move it down to match and use the shape holder tool to connect the two. So you have one shape that's perfectly symmetrical on the top and the bottom. So next I found a font on Adobe Fonts and this one is called Fino Sans and I typed out Target in that font and I played around with the sizing of the T with the dart and I worked on the placement a bit and then here is the final result. I could not be happier with how this turned out. I feel like this is one of my favorite things I've ever made for this channel or my TikTok. I love how the dart looks like it's just about to make contact with the board. I love the font and all the colors I chose. And I'm also just really happy with how I made the slices not be perfectly uniform. I feel like the changes in the sizes make it look more dynamic and give it more movement. It feels more alive, if that makes sense. Okay, up next I have Minecraft and I wanted to pick a real blocky font for this one since obviously Minecraft is made up of mostly all blocks. I found this font called Aerotech Ultra, typed out Minecraft, and I wanted to put a box above that so that combined with the word Minecraft, it made a perfect square. So I made that out and my idea was to make it be different rectangles that made a gradient down toward the word Minecraft. I made these rectangles to act as a spacing reference so that it was the same space from the bottom of the rectangle to Minecraft as each of the spaces in between. And then I decided to kind of play around with how I wanted to make the rectangles look. So once I was happy with the placement and the sizing of everything, I selected it all and used the minus front option from the Pathfinder window to remove all the little spaces in between the rectangle. Initially, I thought I might just do it in green and brown to kind of match what the main ground block looks like in the game. But then I decided to make the top of it be green, the brown in the middle, and then gray at the bottom to kind of mirror all the different layers in Minecraft. Like when you dig down, it goes from grass to dirt to rock. So I made everything the right colors by using the actual pieces from the game as a reference. And finally, I knew that I wanted to make the zombie face be somewhere in the logo since it's actually in the A in the original logo. So I played around with the placement event and I finally landed on putting it in the R and here is the final result. I also really like this one. I feel like it looks like it could be on like a vintage 70s t-shirt. I love how the colors turned out and the gradient and I like that it kind of references the actual game. But it looks like you'd be playing this one on like an Atari system instead of on your phone or the computer. Okay, next we have Twitter and I actually found in doing some research for this that the Twitter bird, people think it looks like this species called the blue naped monarch. So I decided to use that as a reference and give it a more hand drawn feel for this one. I did this by using the pen tool, giving it a stroke, and changing the settings so that the corners and edges were rounded. If you're not familiar with how the pen tool works, it works by selecting, or clicking to make a point, and then clicking somewhere else to make a connecting point. And when you make that second point, you can drag to give it a curve. And then the next point that you make, it'll automatically follow that curve unless you tell it not to. So I did this with basically the whole bird and I wanted to give it kind of my style. So I made the beak a little stylized. I added in some lines where there really weren't lines to kind of give it an effect that looks like feathers. And once I was happy with the outline of this, I wanted to give it a bit of a grounding effect because right now it just looks like it's floating in thin air, but like not actually flying. <laughs> so I added a blue circle around it and I kind of wanted it to look like the Twitter blue, but a little more muted since a lot of these vintage logos are a little more muted. And I played around with the placement of this uh, for a while until I was happy with it. I also went ahead and made the beak and the tail white. And then I found this font called Acer Bat Text Noir, which is very fancy sounding font, but it looks very fancy. <laughs> And when I put it over the blue, the letters were actually transparent. So I just gave it a white background by uh, typing out Twitter and then using the pen tool to fill in the background and then making the font come to the front so that the white was behind it. And the last step was I just added a tiny little white highlight in the eye to kind of give it that twinkle effect. And here's the final result. I feel like this one could be like a design for an old bar or a speakeasy type of sign. I could see it on a street sign, on an old menu, even like on the side of an old white van maybe. 
I think the hand-drawn look with the pen tool turned out better than I could have hoped. This is actually one of the first times I've been using the pen tool to do an illustration, and I'm really happy with how it turned out. I also like that I threw in the blue element so that it kind of references the modern logo. All right, last but not least, we have Nintendo. My idea for this one was to give it a bitmap feel so that it kind of looked like an old Nintendo game. And when I was looking at the history of Nintendo, they actually go back way into like the 1800s, but not a single one uses this bitmap technique. So to start, I found this font called Low Res 9 Narrow Bold, and I wanted to give this one a 70s or 80s kind of colored gradient, just because when I think of vintage video games, I think of like 80s arcade games. So, I found a reference for those colors. I typed out Nintendo in the low res font and gave the letters outlines. Then I played around with the kerning a little bit to make it more tighter and uniform. I made the letters go from this burnt red all the way to this very muted light yellow. And when I was happy with that, I made these two arches on the end to kind of nod to the modern pill shape of the logo right now. And also I just feel like arches signify retro design and they were used in a lot of retro designs. And I messed around a little bit with the colors until I finally landed on this. Again, I couldn't be happier with this one. I think all four of these are some of my favorite designs I've ever made. I feel like this one's a little understated, but it reads exactly how I was hoping it would. I feel like you could see this logo on the side of an old Nintendo arcade game and you wouldn't even know that it was a redesign. I love the color choices and how it's just kind of inspired by those old Nintendo video games. Well, that is it for me today. Obviously, I'm really happy with how these turned out, but let me know what you think in the comments. Today I'm going to be redesigning modern logos so they look vintage. So today's logos that I'm going to be redesigning are the YouTube logo and Starbucks and I really want to make them in a kind of 70s and 50s style. Also I just want to point out these awesome wearable speakers I got. They let me edit videos and listen to music while I work late nights on videos without hurting my ears or disturbing my partner. Anyway, for the YouTube logo I found this really cool font called Casablanca URW. Then I extended the Y to the end of the word. I really wanted to make the play button be like the head of an arrow since so many vintage logos have arrows in them. I rearranged it, gave it a drop shadow, and here's that one all complete. For Starbucks, I found this really cool font called Fimo Type Kitten, and I wanted to include the word cafe, so I used the font Betty Noir for that. I made these two green shapes, then placed the words on top. Lastly, I included some stars since they are in the name, and here's the final result. I love both of these, but I think the Starbucks one is my favorite for today. And if you want to pick yourself up one of these awesome Panasonic wearable speakers, they can also be used for gaming on PC, Xbox, Switch, and so much more. Check out the link in my bio. Today I'm going to be giving modern logos vintage redesigns. I'm redesigning the Tesla and the MTV logos today using Adobe Illustrator. So for Tesla, I really wanted to incorporate motors in the logo since it's actually in their name and make it like an old Hollywood auto shop sign. I made this starburst using the shape tool. I found this font called Scriptorama for Tesla and typed that out in red. And then I found one called Custard to type out motors. I love this font. I staggered those and added these small circles to look like light bulbs, and here's that one all complete. For MTV, I found this font called Kestrel Script and typed that out and gave it a bit of a rise. I also added a stroke and a drop shadow. Then I made this blue and pink vinyl shape and made these small white triangular shapes to look like reflections, and here's the final result. I think the Tesla one is definitely my favorite of the two. To me, it looks like what they used to think logos would look like in the future. Let me know which logos I should do next in the comments. Today, I'm gonna be redesigning the current Patriots logo to look vintage. My idea for this one was to make it kind of look like a vintage American sign that might be hanging up in a restaurant. Now, the Patriots already have a vintage logo from 1960, so I decided to kind of put my own spin on that. I wanted to make the main shape of the logo be the old hat from the other logo, so I started by drawing that out in Illustrator. I found this font called Scriptorama and I wanted to keep the star from the new logo and make that the I in Patriots. Then I typed out New England in this font and gave it an arch effect. And here's when things kind of started going off the rails. I started making a bunch of like organic shapes, like one that looks like a football and a couple other ones in the background. It just started getting to the point where I really disliked it. I tried changing the shape in New England and then I realized I just wanted to go with my original plan with just the hat and Patriots. So I started tweaking those and then I finally came up with something I'm happy with. This is the final result. I think this has a very classic feel and would look really good on something like a sweatshirt or a football helmet. Let me know what you think in the comments. 